Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Al Brick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in Saudi Arabia to head Bahrain's delegation to the 32nd Arab Summit held in Jeddah tomorrow upon the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. At the forefront to receive His Majesty the King, King Abdulaziz, at King Abdulaziz International Airport was the Deputy Governor of Mecca Region, His Royal Highness Prince Badr bin Sultan bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, the Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghait, the Secretary General of Jeddah Governorate, the Mecca Police Chief, Bahrain's Ambassador to Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Ali bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, and the Saudi Under Secretary of Royal Protocol. In a statement on the occasion, His Majesty expressed pleasure upon arriving in Saudi Arabia, expressing appreciation and gratitude to the custodian of the two holy mosques for the invitation to participate in the summit. He hailed the two countries' fraternal historical ties that are based on joint history and common interests. He affirmed that holding the summit is a pleasant occasion to exchange views, consult and enhance coordination between their majesties, their highnesses and their excellencies, the Arab leaders and countries to support the joint Arab action march and achieve the aspirations of their people to unite efforts, strengthen Arab solidarity in facing challenges, protecting Arab interests and gains and consolidating the pillars of peace, security and stability in the Arab region. His Majesty expressed appreciation and gratitude for the sincere efforts exerted by the Saudi monarch for supporting Arab unity and the Arab Solidarity March and serving crucial Arab causes. He commended Saudi Arabia's vital role in supporting the efforts to protect Arab security and achieve the aspirations of Arab security, stability and growth. A mission has been formed, headed by Saudi Arabia's ambassador to Bahrain, His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Ahmed bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa had earlier departed Bahrain for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to lead Bahrain's delegation to the 32nd Arab Summit in Jeddah held tomorrow at the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The Kingdom of Bahrain enjoys a high political and economic status at the Arab and international levels due to its balance and wise policy thanks to the directives of His Majesty the King. More in this report. Based on the Kingdom of Bahrain's belief and unwavering certainty in the importance of Arab solidarity regarding all matters in light of global changes, His Majesty the King has always called for uniting Arab ranks. From this standpoint, the Kingdom was keen in every Arab forum to firmly present its positions in support of all Arab efforts that seek to reject differences, unite ranks and face challenges, especially through the Arab League and its summits. Within the framework of Arab solidarity, the Kingdom is aware of the importance of uniting Arab visions and positions to protect Arab collective security for future generations. The Kingdom of Bahrain always strives to advance the levels of coordination and consultations between Arab countries to strengthen Arab unity. The Kingdom's historical stances in defending its Arabism is evident by its firm stance towards the Palestinian cause. Bahrain supported all important issues, foremost of which is the fight against terrorism and piracy. It also played a prominent and effective role on the economic level by supporting investment, developing Arab projects and opening up to the global economy. The Kingdom of Bahrain, thanks to the wisdom of His Majesty the King and his forward-looking vision, witnesses constructive cooperation with Arab countries to advance joint Arab action. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 43 of the year 2023 appointing a President of the University of Bahrain, the UOB, based on the nomination of the UOB Board of Trustees and following the approval of the Cabinet. Under the decree, Dr. Fuad Mohamed Al Ansari was appointed UOB President for a four-year term. His Majesty also issued Decree 44 of the year 2023 appointing a Secretary General of the Higher Education Council, HEC, based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the cabinet. 
Under the decree, Dr. Diana Abdel Karim Al Jahrami was appointed HEC Secretary General. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 45 of the year 2023, amending Article 1 of Decree 61 of 2021 on the establishment of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to the decree, the phrase uh, the Minister mentioned in Article 1 of Decree 61 of the year 2021 shall be replaced by the the Minister of Education. His Majesty also issued Decree 46 of the year 2023, appointing a member at a board of directors of the GSA based on the nomination of the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and following the approval of the Cabinet. Under the decree, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak Jum'a was appointed GSA Board of Directors member. His Majesty the King issued Royal Decree 47 of the year 2023, appointing a Director General at the Interior Ministry's Customs Affairs based on a proposal by the Interior Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. The decree stipulates the appointment of Sheikh Amnira bint Muhammad Al Khalifa as Director General of Customs Clearance and Services. His Majesty also issued Decree 48 of the year 2023, appointing a Director General at the Southern Area Municipality based on a proposal by the Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture and following the approval of the Cabinet. Under the decree, Isa Abdurrahman Assisi al Buainain was appointed Director General at the Southern Area Municipality. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 42 of the year 2023 based on a proposal by the Minister of Interior. According to the edict, Major Nasser Isa Nasser Al Nattar was appointed as Director at the Ministry of Interior. The Minister of Interior shall place the Director mentioned in the first article in one of the vacant directorates, taking into account the tasks and responsibilities of the Directorate and the qualifications and experience of the nominated Director. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 43 of the year 2023, appointing directors at the Northern Government based on a proposal by the Minister of Interior. According to the Edict, Dalal Nasser Shabib Al Naimi was appointed as Director of the Information and Follow Up Directorate, and Suhail Ahmed Yusha Al Yusha was appointed as Director of the Engineering and Investment Services Directorate. The ministers of foreign affairs of Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Morocco and Jordan met on the sidelines of the preparatory ministerial meetings for the Arab summit in Jeddah. The meeting discussed regional and international developments including the development of the agreement between Saudi Arabia and Iran to restore diplomatic relations. The meeting emphasized preserving common Arab interests and the means to continue to seek their best interest. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is preparing to host the 32nd Arab Summit by organizing several preparatory meetings ahead of the summit, which will be held tomorrow. More in this report. Preparations are underway in the city of Jeddah ahead of the launch of the Arab Summit, the most prominent of which was holding the preparatory meeting by Arab foreign ministers, during which Saudi Arabia officially assumed the presidency of the summit from Algeria. This summit is exceptional due to the challenges facing the countries of the region, which was affirmed by the Saudi Foreign Minister, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan, during the preparatory meeting of foreign ministers. A few days before the meeting of foreign ministers, the preparatory meeting of the Economic and Social Council was held, followed by preparatory meetings at the level of permanent delegates and senior officials. These meetings discussed economic and political affairs aimed at raising the level of cooperation and integration, supporting joint Arab action and advancing development in Arab countries. Arab leaders will convene tomorrow to produce important recommendations that enhance stability, security and prosperity in the region and unify visions on all challenges. The Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture, Wa'il Mbarak, attended the closing of the 6th Smart City Summit. Al Mbarak said that the summit is considered one of the top specialized conferences in Bahrain, which provides access to international expertise that could support the development of local capabilities in utilizing artificial intelligence and urban development. The conference produced a number of recommendations, including the development of a comprehensive strategy for smart cities that includes policies, regulations, and guidelines for the development and implementation of smart city solutions. The summit discussed a number of important topics such as smart city solutions, future technology, smart buildings, digital twining, smart and sustainable agricultural technologies, and a presentation of government agencies' initiatives in smart cities. The Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wa'al Mbarak, signed an agreement for investment and management of a car parking building with the Bahrain 
Park, Bahrain Car Parks Company Amakin to manage and operate the multi-story car parking building in the old Manama Souk. The minister highlighted the remarkable efforts of the private sector as a main and active partner in the developmental process, which supports the continuity of development of government services and implementation of the directives of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Mr. Mbarak stated that the agreement comes in line with the partnership with the private sector to develop municipal services for visitors to markets and users of services sector in Manama. For her part, the Assistant Undersecretary for Projects at the Prime Minister's Office and Head of the Government Lands Investment Committee, Maryam Al Ansari, affirmed that signing the agreement is the first step of activating the role of the Government Land Investment Platform and implementing its goals. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, conducted an inspection visit to the Department of Important Food Control at Khalifa bin Salman Port, where she was briefed on developments in the workflow. The Minister praised the tireless efforts made by the workers in the Food Control Department and health inspectors who performed their work tasks with high efficiency to verify the safety of food imported and traded in the local markets. During the inspection, ways to develop and modernize work mechanisms and raise the efficiency of the services provided by the department were discussed and reviewed in order to ensure the safety of food and fulfillment of all approved and applicable health requirements and standards to preserve the health and safety of all citizens and residents in the kingdom. The Minister of Youth Affairs, Rawan Tawfigi, presented the Prince Salman bin Hamad Medal for Medical Merit to the Ministry's employees. The handing of the merit comes per the order of His Majesty the King and directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to all concerned authorities to present the merit to medical teams, Bahrain Defence Force, Interior Ministry and other supportive entities. The Minister affirmed that the pride of His Majesty and appreciation of His Royal Highness for the national efforts of all those who work to combat the coronavirus creates a motivation to continue to strive for the development of the Kingdom in all fields. She praised the ministry's employees' efforts and their tireless work in the front lines during the coronavirus pandemic. The minister congratulated the recipients of the medal, expressing her gratitude to all the frontline workers for their efforts in combating the coronavirus pandemic. The employees expressed their pride for receiving the medal and affirmed that the medal represents an incentive to continue working to serve the kingdom. The National Institution for Human Rights, NIHR, in cooperation with the Council of Representatives, has held an introductory meeting for the delegation of the Asian Parliament, which includes deputies, members and heads of delegations from around 23 Asian parliaments. The chairman of NIHR, Engineer Ali Dirazi, delivered a speech in which he stressed the importance of these visits to learn about the achievements and progress in the kingdom at all levels in general and human rights in particular as a result of its legislative, judicial and human rights system. The meeting included a video presentation on the role played by the NIHR in promoting and protecting human rights in Bahrain, its efforts and important achievements at the local, regional and international levels, and its advisory role in raising human rights recommendations to relevant authorities on various human rights issues. The Kingdom of Bahrain attended the fifth review meeting of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons held in the Netherlands. Bahrain's ambassador in Brussels and representative to the organization, Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabbar, led the Kingdom's delegation. During the meeting, the delegation praised the continuous and constructive cooperation between Bahrain and the organization. The delegation reviewed Bahrain's efforts in implementing the Chemical Weapons Convention, highlighting the establishment of its national committee in 2011. They highlighted Bahrain's issuance of a law banning the development, production and stockpiling of bacteriological and toxin weapons and their destruction. The delegation also called for the Middle East to be a zone free of weapons and of mass destruction, stressing the importance of strengthening international cooperation in the fields of using chemicals for peaceful and beneficial purposes. The Kingdom of Bahrain continues its technological advancement, especially in the digitalization of government services, which caters for the people of Bahrain. Participating in the sixth edition of the Smart City Summit Committee, the Information E-Government Authority highlighted its dedication to further boosting this. We are joined on the phone by the Director of Geographical Information Systems at IGA, Dr. Sheikh Hamey Mohammed Al Khalifa. Hello, Dr. Sheikh Hamey. Can you tell us more about the Authority's participation in the summit and what updated updates you present? Good evening, and thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Smart Cities uh, Summit 2023 is a key event that uh, showcased the number of international practices and digital transformation initiatives towards the Smart Cities and IGA is pleased to be part of this important uh, event. Um, IGA 
participated in the stand and exhibition organized alongside with the summit to demonstrate the several digital transformation projects and systems that support that support the real estate development in the Kingdom of Bahrain and facilitate the uh, investor services such as the planning platform, planning.ph, which was showcased during the exhibition. Um, it's an interactive digital platform that uh, provides services related to land planning processes and mechanism, mechanisms, in addition to providing urban planning and development services, where 11 services have been launched with a total of 279 applications in the year 2022, and up to 80% reduction in application processing time. Moreover, IGA showcased a number of e-services available on the national portal Bahrain.ph and other digital initiatives that support the smart cities. On the other side, IGA was also part of two panel discussions during the summit agenda. The first panel was about food security and agri-tech in Bahrain, opportunities and challenges, during which we showcased a number of IGA projects, such as the vegetation survey, the soil mapping, and uh, the botanical atlas project. The other panel was about enabling smart citizens, in which IGA highlighted the national suggestion and complaint system, Tawassal, and the Tawassal app. As part also of the event, IGA was awarded with Smart Cities 2023 awards under the category Smart Citizens Engagement for the Tawassal app, where the app has been uh, awarded for its features and e-services that contribute to reinforce and enhance the community partnership that supports smart cities. Great, and that was the Director of Geographical Information Systems at IGA, Dr. Sheikh Hamey Mohammed Al Khalifa. Thank you for joining us. The National Bureau for Revenue has conducted 281 inspection visits within the local markets of Bahrain during March and April 2023. The campaigns resulted in reporting violations that require the imposition of administrative fines in accordance with the VAT and excise law, in addition to monitoring several suspicions of VAT and excise evasion that may require the precautionary closing of several businesses. These efforts come as part of the regular inspection and control procedures that contribute to addressing tax evasion and preventing the possession trade sale or supply of products that have not fulfilled their VAT or excise obligations, which includes the digital stamp scheme on cigarette products in the local markets entered into force on October 16, 2022.